Welcome back, pro wrestling fans. Welcome back, IWC. It's me. It's me. It's the GOC. Coming to you live to tape 25 feet below the surface of the earth. Wait. Wait a minute. I know we go through this almost every time. I'm live. I'm definitely live. I mean, here it is on... Uh, uh, Tuesday morning, but I am taping it at the same time. Ah, the fuck it. You guys understand what's going on here with the live to tape, right? Welcome back to Guardian of Chaos, the YouTube channel, for another special episode of Chaos Corner. Now, you know we've been following and doing the live to tape watch alongs of all the WrestleManias leading into WrestleMania 40 coming up in April. I believe 7th and 8th of 2024. Now, fans, we did the WrestleMania 1 live to tape watch along. We did WrestleMania 2. We did WrestleMania 3. So I'm going to jump out of order here. I'm not going to go to WrestleMania 4 or 5 or 6. I'm going to go to lucky WrestleMania number 7. April 1st, 1991, from the Los Angeles Memorial Sports Arena, which you know they were allegedly going to hell it, uh, hold it at the L.A. Memorial Coliseum, where, where they hold 100,000 fans. Now, the WWF at the time claimed that we know there in 1991 it was the Persian Gulf, the Gulf War. So it was very tough times here as I salute our military men and women across the country, across the globe. Everyone from the Coast Guard to the uh, Marines to the Army to the Navy to the Air Force and everybody in between, including the Reserves and the National Guard. Because they really are the ones that are sacrificing their lives for us. Let's see what happens here in the insanity of 2024 as our borders are being invaded, our country is being invaded. There's wars all over the world and there's more to come. What's going on with the planet, the environment? It really is insanity. Crime is through the roof. Stay situationally aware. Keep your family and friends close. Use your discernment. Be prepared. Because Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Don't be caught dead without him. And that's a shoot. If he's for us, nobody else can be against us. So to start off here on Chaos Corner, I want to shout out our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, let's move on uh, to WrestleMania 7. As I said, we know that the WWF explained that they were trying to go to uh, the Memorial Coliseum, which holds 100,000 fans. So they ended up going to the L.A. Memorial Sports Arena, as I repeat here, where they had over 16,000 fans because they said it was due to security concerns with Sergeant Slaughter going uh, heel face, uh, heel G.I. Joe. And at, that, and at this point, he was at war. And I'll use the word with the incredible, the immortal Hulk Hogan. Now there's 14 matches on the bill. We'll run down the card. I have the original old school, just like the board set up in the board op here. All turn style, turn dials and, and levers up and down and the, the, the two camera angles and the simple bitch that's over here. You know who that is. I don't want to start arguing with her, but here's the original. We're doing it on VHS, OG style. One man, unique, unedited, unscripted, raw dog for you, the fans. There it is. WrestleMania 7. March 24th, 1991. So we'll we'll run through the card before we get going. Uh, this also, is for some historical notes, is the final televised match of the original Hart Foundation, which we know is Jim DeAnvil, Neidhart, and Bret the Hart, the Hitman Hart. I almost said the Hart Man hit. You saw that, right? But you know what Bully Ray said to me back in 06, 07? Well, myself and the Outcast Killers were going for the NWA World Tag Team titles against Team 3D in a series of tables matches. You know Bully Ray. Busted open after dark. Uh, busted open co-host with LaGreca and Tommy Dreamer and Mickey James and Mark Henry and Santa Rosa and whoever the fuck else they have on there. Two-time Hall of Famer, perhaps one of the greatest tag teams of all time. He said to the GOC Big Daddy at the time, who was 330 pounds. Now I'm weighing in at about 220. Jack, rip, buff, like shredded wheat. Check out the videos here on the channel. He said, 
put his arms around me in a locker room, said, give Big Daddy five spots, he'll fuck up four of them. I consider that to be a compliment coming from Bully Ray. Just to give you a little history, a little background. Yes, yes, I have my coffee. I have my java right here. So grab a snack, grab a beverage. It's early in the morning. Let's fucking roll, man. WrestleMania 7. So the last televised match of the Hart Foundation, Bret the Hitman Hart, the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be, in the Anvil, Jim the Anvil Nightheart. And you guys know my connection with the Hart Foundation. Being able to perform and be on the same events with Anvil and Bret the Hitman Hart. Well, let that marinate. Let that sink in. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. And here at WrestleMania 7 in 1991, during the Gulf War and the big feud with Slaughter and Hogan, which is the main event, this was The Undertaker's debut at WrestleMania that started the streak. WrestleMania 7. So let's keep all that in mind for the tidbits uh, of everything and useless facts of historical information that I provide here when you do your due diligence. Uh, as we go on to WrestleMania 7. Now I might do this like I usually do because we don't want to get you here for the whole 180 minutes uh, straight. I might break it up into part one, which this will be along with my opening monologue. Part two, and depending, maybe a part three. I like to do them in two parts so I keep your guys' attention. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, share this out. We have over 1,035 subscribers now. We're coming up on those 4,000 watch hours. We're pushing for 1 million total views. 2,700, 2,800 videos on the channel. Navigate, search, have some fun. We have everything from live to tape watch-alongs to doing the pay-per-views from WWE and AEW to doing story time with the GOC. This date in pro wrestling history with the Guardian of Chaos. We do book reviews. There isn't any... We do dinner for two with my lovely wife. We do shorts, although not many. There isn't anything that we don't do on this channel that I don't do. Go to the community page. It's updated probably every couple of days on what's going on and different things that I cover in real time. You guys are going to want to be on this channel. Everything I've done in my career, everything that I've talked about, all the legends and stars and heroes and rookies and young lions and veterans that I worked with in my over 30 years as a pro wrestling manager and took the fucking bump. That's right, I took them. Came out two or three times a night with my uh, the men under my tutelage and my stable uh, my goon squad, if you will. And I put myself, although I never signed a contract, I never worked for the WWE or Jim Crocker Promotions or WCW, but I've worked for everybody else in between. I've talked to everybody from J.J. Dillon to Jim Ross to Harley Race to Dusty Rhodes to, to Kevin Kelly to, to Terry Taylor, trying to get booked all over the fucking world. And guess what? I did it. On a lower level, that's okay. I'm the most well-known unknown. And I put myself in the category with Gary Harder. J.J. Dillon, Jim Cornette, Bobby Heenan, Jimmy Hart, Captain Louis Albano, Classy Freddie Blassie, The Grand Wizard, Paul Heyman. That's right. I put myself in the caliber of those managers. Let that sink in. All right, let me get started here. Let me get down to the ops. Let's not get crazy. We're nine minutes in for the opening monologue. And again, follow me on all social media platforms. You know what they are. On Instagram, it's the Guardian of Chaos. On X, a.k.a. Twitter, it's at Big Daddy GOC. And the GOC stands for the Guardian of Chaos. On Facebook, I have two accounts. That's right, there's two. You'll see my face. J Brony. Just like it sounds, Jay Brony. For all you jabronis out there, mouth breathers and neck beards and virgins and geeks and dweebs and going to no offense, man, kayfabe. Take a joke, lighten up. And then, of course, the other account on Facebook in honor of my heritage, Protigio Fidelis El Guardian. That's right, figure it out. Protigio Fidelis El Guardian. Now, those are on Facebook. Also, Guardian of Chaos, the YouTube channel. This is where you are. Follow me on Gitter, Gab, Truth Social, Rumble. I cover it all in the IWC. Well, the opening monologue now is 10 minutes. Let's get on to WrestleMania 7. And this will definitely be part one. And we'll do a part two just so we don't get too crazy. I got to get the old board, uh, board ops here. You should see it. This is probably from the late 80s. Or, well, maybe even 
early mid 90s even when i had web tv when everyone else was on aol and dial up i mean you, you guys understand right all right stand by you got to look at the dome piece for a second don't get crazy let's see what we got here it's the, listen it's the old board op i can't do it forever here we go wrestlemania 7 april 1st 1991 you will hear no sound there will be no algorithms copy strikes anything else like that the only thing i ask is that you put it out there become a subscriber hey become a member i think it's like two dollars or something like that no paywalls no patreon no green screens no editing no uh, sound uh, different things that people have no venmo paypal zenmo whatever it is what did you guys use uh, super chats it's free because it's me, the GOC. Become a member is all I ask. Go buy me a coffee. And speaking of that, I have my own fucking coffee if you don't want to buy me a coffee. That's okay, but I love you guys, man. This is my stress reliever, okay? This is the way that I put out my love and passion and motivation for this business and for what I did as my journey. You know that my bread and butter was 25 years behind the walls along with being a bail enforcement agent, which back then was a bounty hunter, private security, private investigator, bodyguard, the whole nine yards. You guys know it. And now I've transitioned back to this. So, uh, as I said, we're going to do this in two parts, and we're doing as many WrestleManias that I have time for leading into WrestleMania 40. Think about it. When I covered WrestleMania 1 in 1985, it was on closed-circuit TV. Could you imagine? Uh, so, and, and I, I always like to put it there as how old I was. And like I said, in 85, I was 22, 23 years old for the original WrestleMania. Here we are, WrestleMania 7 in 1991. What am I at that point? Uh, in my late 20s, uh, approaching and pushing the big 3-0. Uh, and here we go to start off Willie Nelson. Let's smoke him if you got him, man. I mean, it's legal in most states. I'm just saying. I'm not condoning. I'm just, I'm not smoking. I got coffee. Uh, might be hazelnut this morning. It's Willie Nelson, the old country legend who certainly is an unbelievable man. And he's singing, Oh, beautiful for spacious skies. Unbelievable. Willie was a legend. He's got the red bandana on, the sunglasses on the bandana. He's wearing, the, you know, the outlaw country music look, the long hair. Willie looks good in 1991. So I'm going to continue to talk over this so we don't get any copyrights. I've been getting hit with them left and right. I don't know what's going on with the two, man. But they're certainly uh, having me take down some videos. Now, listen, when you get a copyright, it doesn't mean it's a strike against your channel. It just means it can't be monetized because it's blocked in six or seven or nine different territories or something like that which half of them they got to jerk off the dog to feed the cat i don't even know why they're on here but those are the rules here i've already had a couple of uh, chats donated and people join as members and do you know here on the tube you don't start collecting or able to go live to tape unless you have that 1000 plus subscribers or 10 million views in shorts yeah or you get the 4,000 watch hours. you got to get two out of the three. So I'm going to have two out of the three because I really don't do shorts and editing and all that stuff. You guys know that. But I want to be able to go live with you guys is what I would really like to do, to be quite honest with you. And, and then whatever happens from there, I'm not doing this to make a living. This is uh, a stress reliever in this day and age, and I hope I can provide that to you. So much love and, much love and respect. We open up Willie Nelson, again, beautiful rendition, and we go to Gino, a.k.a. the big man, Gorilla Monsoon, on the mic with the GOC, because I'll be doing the play-by-play -play and talking during it. You, you guys get it. Again, I didn't want to do it in order. We did WrestleMania 1, 2, and 3 so far, so go back and check it out. I also did a live to tape for the pay-per-view AEW Revolution. I've been putting some of my training videos and fitness and motivation videos up on the channel. Check it out, guys. Plus, dinner for two. All the different shorts. Classical, historical footage from other talent, other grapplers, other territories from down here in the vault at Chaos Chronicles on Chaos Corner. So check out all this stuff. 
and you got to really go back and if you hit the columns where it says most recent most popular oldest remember i didn't really start posting until about three years ago although i so that's 2700 2800 videos in about three years i signed up for the tube in 2017 first video dropped uh, uh four years ago so what what was that uh 20 2019 uh, or, or we got 2020 or 2018 so i went a first year or two with no videos on the channel just to set it up to have the account because i knew somewhere down the road especially my involvement with paradise alley pro wrestling that i would be on here and here it is ho dressed up like uncle sam with the two by four it's hacksaw jim duggan oh hacksaw is unbelievable what a legend you guys know my history with the hacksaw had the chance to work with the hacksaw i don't know at least two or three matches and let me tell you something what a class act what a tough son of a bitch nobody to be trifled with and what he turned himself in from the the hardcore brawling bruiser bruiser down in the uwf and bill watts and florida and georgia and all those different territories into the hacksaw oh what a transition and he made money we look at Sean Mooney backstage with Marty Jannetty and Sean Michaels, the heartburn kid. In real life, these two didn't really get along. You know they did not like each other, right? But this is the opening bout. I'm going to run through it here uh, quickly, what the matches are. But we got Michaels and Jannetty backstage. WrestleMania 7, The Rockers. Here's the card. Here's the lineup. Here's the rundown. We have the Legion of Doom, Animal and Hawk, the Road Warriors, against Power and Glory of Pretty Paul Roma and Hercules Hernandez. The Rockers are going to take on the Barbarian and Haku with Bobby the Brain Heenan. And that's what we're starting off with. Haku and the Barbarian, two of the baddest motherfuckers in the... I apologize for the language. In all of pro wrestling, Howard Finkel, the Fink, on the mic at WrestleMania, two of the baddest guys around especially Haku, the barbarian, truly humble, unbelievable guys. I just met uh, uh, Haku, Ming, uh, whatever you guys want to call him. What a gentleman. I met him last year at the New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame in Fan Fest 7, uh, or Fan Fest 8, I apologize. It was uh, incredible, and he was a great guy. He even grabbed me around the neck and shook me up a little bit. I love it. So that's what we're opening up with here. We're also going to have the Bulldog against the Warlord. We have a, a couple of the Japanese stars. Konichi wa bitches. Origato from the Chaos Sun. I believe it's going to be, if I look at it, Tenru and Kitao against Demolition with Mr. Fuji. The Texas Tornado and Dino Bravo, the Tornado, Kerry Von Erich. Dino Bravo will be with Jimmy Hart. The Superfly, Jimmy Snooker, will take on, in his debut, as I said, The Undertaker, who will be with Paul Bearer. Take the Snake against Rick Martell, the model, in a blindfold match. You guys forgot about that for WrestleMania 7. The old blindfold match. Also, Virgil, rest in peace, who just passed away, Mike Jones, will be with Rowdy Roddy Piper against... The Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. Now you know the whole backstory there. Mr. Perfect, the Intercontinental title will, uh, champion, will go up against the Big Boss Man. The Hart Foundation will defend the tag team titles against the Nasty Boys. And in the main event, well, no, not the main event, the co-main event, the Ultimate Warrior will take on the Macho King, Randy Savage. Unbelievable. Savage, who's done more in his uh, in his career and is truly, in my opinion, underrated. And he'll be with Sensational Queen Sherry. And then the big one for the World Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Championship. It's Sergeant Slaughter. For all you goons that don't remember in 1991, Slaughter was the World Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Champion taking on the challenger Hulk Hogan. So that's your card. That's your lineup. And in the ring right now, the Rockers, fast and furious. Wow, step over. Jump over. Haku, Shawn Michaels. A big right to the proboscis by Haku on Shawn Michaels. Let me 
Get a little more Java amped in my veins here. For WrestleMania 7, live to tape. Talk about history. Part 1. Part 1. Stay here for part 2. We're 20 minutes in. I'm going to have to do a part 2. Maybe a part 3, but just... Oh, beautiful kick up by Michaels. Big double clothesline by the Barbarian. Down goes Janetti. Down goes Michaels. As we look over the shoulders of Bobby Heenan. Haku misses with the double clothesline. Double super kick by the Rockers. Both on Haku and Barbarian. Haku over the top rope. Barbarian rolls out underneath the ropes. The Rockers are in fuego. And who's the referee? Dangerous Danny Davis. Who just, uh, what was it, in, in 2021? was here at Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling at the Cadillac Ranch. That's right, Danny Davis working for Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. I've said it many times before. You get young lions, rookies, students, veterans, heroes, and legends at PAPW. And the shadows of Titan Towers run like a territory. That's what Roma, Mancini, Perez, and Big Steve do, along with yours truly. And big shout-out to uh, the Sabans as well. Big chops by the Barbarian. The Barbarian back here in 1991. Just in great shape. Huge. Now, uh, Marty Jannetty wearing the green tassels, the green trunks. Same thing with Shawn Michaels. The bleach blonde hair. Totally different Shawn Michaels than we than when we got in the uh, attitude and the aggression era of Shawn Michaels. And we know Marty Jannetty now is going through his own personal demons and his own personal problems. Uh, just... Uh, Say prayers out to Janetti, who seems to be uh, his own worst enemy. But who am I to judge anybody? Sunset Flip, trying to take down the Barbarian. No way. The Barbarian goes for the right hand. Janetti moves out of the way. Right hand into the canvas. Janetti up on top of the Barbarian. What are you doing? Is he trying to go for a Hurricane Rana? Drop kick by Michaels. Barbarian goes over in a Hurricane Rana. Janetti laying in the right hands on the big man. Wow, the Rockers really taking it to Ming and Haku right now. Well... And the Barbarian. There's only two of them, not three. Nice arm ringer tie up. Janetti, Barbarian with a big head out of nowhere, stops Janetti in his tracks. And here comes the the bootless uh, Haku and the double head butt. See, back here in the 80s and 90s, the guys that look like they should be given a head butt or do it traditionally are the guys that give the headbutts. Not like here in 2024 where everybody's brother, uncle, sister's cousin's ass is giving a, a headbutt. And again, Chinetti going for that same maneuver on, on Haku for the Tilt the World or the Hurricane Rana, but no dice. Barbarian double team maneuver, jumps over the top rope, drops Chinetti across that top rope, which is just a thick cable. You guys know that. Down goes Janetti. Big trouble for the Rockers right now. And this is what you would expect realistically and how it's supposed to work uh, when, you, when it comes to the OG wrestling. There's no way for as good as they are as a tag team, high-flying, young, exuberant, uh, agile, mobile. I get it. They should not be anywhere near physically. And I get it. It's, it's a competition that's predetermined. But come on. Haku and the Barbarian against Janetti and Michaels? <laughs> really? Do I have to say what would happen in fucking reality? I don't I don't think I do. And I apologize for the cussing, man. Far side, Barbarian, Janetti. Up over the ropes. Barbarian picking up Janetti, pressing him up above the air. Big body slam by the Barbarian. Ah. Janetti just trying to roll away into the corner, trying to get to the ropes. And the Barbarian out of nowhere with a right to the jib of Shawn Michaels. Just a quick little distraction to wake him up. In comes Michaels. Referees got him distracted. And both the Warlord and the Barbarian with the double team choke on Janetti. That's tag team wrestling, heel wrestling 101. And what I would teach my guys and what I've taught and told my guys in the past in my 30 plus year journey. Far side. Haku misses with the clothesline. Oh, double flying body press. Both men go down. Janetti lands on top. Only a two count. Only a two. I was shocked just by that. And now look, Ming, Haku, whatever you want to call him, put in the, the open toed, uh, obviously no boots, but put in the feet and the ankles and the calves uh, to the body of uh, Janetti. Far side, turnbuckle whip, iris whip, down goes Janetti. Side backbreaker by Haku. 
another side backbreaker, picking him up like he's a mere child. And this is the reality of pro wrestling as the cameras focus on Heenan, who's given advice. And that's what I did throughout the matches with my guys. Kept him on the run. You're a corner man. You're supposed to be yelling, kick up, get out, drop down, put him in this whole tag. That's what you do as a manager. You distract the referee, the other tag team, whatever you have to do to get your guy to win for the bigger purse. Big clothesline by a barbarian on Gennetti. Gennetti's on Queer Street. He's on his heels. He's reeling. He needs to make the tag to the heartburn kid. The heartbreak kid. My, my bad. My bad. Bear hug now by the barbarian. And again, I've said it on these last several shows, uh, especially doing the WrestleManias, where you see the simple move and maneuver of a bear hug and what it could do to the third vertebrae in the lower lumbar region of your back. It could crack your back. If it's a, a, a giant like Andre the Giant or someone with strength uh, like a Kent Patera uh, uh, or, or a Don Morocco or a warlord or a barbarian, a superstar Billy Graham, you put that bear hug on somebody and they're just about all done. You could suck the wind out of them, crack the, the ribs, the back. Don't you guys understand? Barbarian will not let go, pushes him back into the corner. Gennetti finally out of a bear hug. Far side once again. Bang! Reversal back to the other side, and the Barbarian tosses Gennetti in hard into that turnbuckle. But playing to the crowd a little bit, Barbarian. The red, white, and blue themed WrestleMania with the stars and bars and the red and white stripes for the United States of America. There's a lot to be said now. Oh, off the top rope comes Gennetti, and Barbarian catches him. Power slam. You should have pinned him. Pin him, Barbarian. Heenan, what are you doing? Tell him to fucking pin him right now. Pin him. Don't stand above him. He's out like a light, and now you got to go up to the high rent district, go all the way up to the top rope. What are you doing, Barbarian? This wouldn't happen under the guidance of me. I'm just telling you. I'm not questioning Heenan. Goes for the giant head splash, the, the head butt, and what happens? Gennetti moves out of the fucking way. Just like I said, just like I predicted, and I'm not questioning Heenan, but just look at the mind and where I'm coming from. Gennetti now has got to desperately make that tag. Barbarian is close to the war, uh, to Ming. I was going to say the war lord because that was his partner for years. Ming is in. Gennetti makes the tag to Michaels. Michaels unloaded with the right hands on Haku. Far side, off the ropes. Big flying back elbow by Michaels. Michael's uh, firing up with those big right hands to the head, but how are you going to hurt Haku with all those right hands to the head? Now he's got him in the corner. One, two, three, but how are you going to hurt him like that? Reverse flying body press on a barbarian that was coming in the ring. Beautifully done by Michaels. Again, I don't understand the right hands to the head of these two giants. Beautiful swinging neck breaker by Michaels. Here's the cover on Ming. Only a two, only a two. You would think I this is the first time I saw, but this is what you get on this channel. This is how a watch along supposed to be. Not some guy like this and talking. Uh, oh, a beautiful f uh, sunset flip by Michaels. He's got Haku. Gennetti off the other side. Big clothesline. Down goes Haku. Here's the count. Breaking it up, Barbarian. All four men in the ring. This is broken down. Gennetti and a Barbarian. Michaels and Gennetti, double drop kick. Out goes the Barbarian. Heenan, what are you doing? Double clothesline on Ming. Gennetti and Michaels, what are they going to do? Both to the top rope. Ming is up. Missile drop kick by Gennetti on Haku Ming. Michaels is up. Flying body press on Haku. Hooks the leg. There's the cover. Shawn Michaels pins Haku with a flying body press off the top rope. Wow. What a matchup. What a way to open up WrestleMania 7. That was a good matchup. Again, uh, I could see with the teamwork and the speed and the agility, a little hard to believe for me. Haku and the Barbarian had their chances. And Bobby Heenan, you missed the spot, bro. And we all have. I'm just saying. Wow. A great opening uh, about here. Guys, stand by. You're going to have to look at the dome piece. Stand by. Let's see, what, let's see what's happening here. All right, uh, backstage, uh, who do we have here? Regis Philbin with Mean Gene Okerlund, Marla Maples, and Alex Trebek. Always the pageantry at WrestleMania, and here it was at WrestleMania 7. Let's fast forward through this a little bit, fans. Don't go anywhere. I don't want to make this into a four-hour tape. 
WrestleMania 7. It really was decent, but again, for these pay-per-views, you know what you're getting. 13, 14, 15 matches, double main events. That's what you're getting. Here we go now with Dino Bravo as he takes on Kerry Von Erich. Now, if you remember, Dino Bravo was on uh, the Dark Side of the Ring episode. I'm not sure if you guys uh, have seen it. Go out and check it out because it really was uh, uh, something to behold and what Bravo, who was a star, who is a legend, and what he went through and what happened to him and his ultimate demise as he takes on another controversial figure at this point in 91, the Texas Tornado, Kerry Von Erich. So that's the matchup here. Uh, Dino Bravo has Jimmy Hart in his corner. It's Kerry Von Erich, who's the Texas Tornado. I'm just going to say Kerry. They start outside. Bravo with the bleach blonde hair, the blue trunks. Kerry in the white trunks, the tassels on the boots. Bravo is just like a, a refrigerator. He's thick. He's huge. And we know Kerry's in incredible shape. And at this point, as we know, and it could, you, you could see it looking back on it. With, with the amputated foot, you, you could see his limitations and how different of a grappler he was as opposed to the early 80s and into the middle, late 80s of world-class championship wrestling. I mean, it just is, it's obvious. Trying with the uh, old iron claw on Dino Bravo, but no go as Bravo with the big chops on Von Erich, the tornado, into the corner. Far side. Nice reversal. Into the corner. Bravo with a big boot to the gym of Kerry Von Erich. Down goes Von Erich. There's Jimmy Hart with that Damn megaphone, which used to annoy the fuck out of me. I apologize for that. Oh, big uh, reverse atomic drop by Dino Bravo. And now an elbow across the chest by Bravo. Bravo was just thick. He looked like a grizzly bear. And he, again, the ironicity, if that's a word, the ironicness, whatever you want to say. Somebody check into it. Leave a comment. Uh, Bravo and Von Erich and their ultimate de demise of both these two guys really is uh, something and to see this here in 91 at WrestleMania 7. Nice reversals. Misses by Bravo. And a big sidewalk slam by Bravo on Kerry Von Erich. Let me talk to this bitch, please. Hold on. Dino Bravo, Kerry Von Erich. WrestleMania 7 in the ring. Alexa, play Tropical Thunderstorm sounds. It's that easy. She's on the payroll. Don't get on me about it. She's on the payroll. Bravo off the middle rope. Big right clubbing forearm to the back, to the shoulder blades of Von Erich. A chop to the throat by Bravo. I didn't know he had it in him. Everybody was kung fu fighting. Now boots to the midsection. The abdomens of Kerry Von Erich. The rather developed abdomen. Again, Bravo up to the second rope. Von Erich in the middle of the ring. Oh, and Bravo goes to d deliver a double axe handle. And Von Erich out of nowhere with the iron claw. He's got the claw on Dino Bravo. This is what they were known for. Go out and watch the Iron Claw. Leave your wrestling knowledge at home and take it for what it's worth. No matter what you say. Like it, love it, hate it. It is what it is, man. Appreciate the product instead of being so fucking critical. I get it. I give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. I understand. I respect your opinion. But take the fandom out of it and just go for the story. Okay? Discus punch by Von Erich on Bravo. Down goes Bravo. Here's the cover. Three count. Von Erich with a simple discus punch out of nowhere. Down goes Bravo. And the Texas Tornado with the victory at WrestleMania 7. 1991. It wouldn't be much longer after than this. Than, uh, both of these men had their problems. And especially Kerry Von Erich. So again, fans, let's, let's not be here on a crazy note. Kerry Von Erich over Dino Bravo. With the mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart. Again, bear with me. We're going old school. Raw dog for you, the fans. Let's see what we have next, guys. Coming up, we have, like I said, we have 15 matches. I'm going to try to get through it. So we have some fun. Again, I've watched many watch-alongs with some pretty uh, pretty decent uh, uh, podcasts. There's some guys that do a great job for what they do on their channels and their networks. You see that I do the bare minimum as far as putting money into the product because I want to bring you raw reality, me. That's what I want. So, But I watch these uh, watch-alongs with some very influential and good people at what they do. And I got to tell you, there's nothing like being here, whether it's live to tape, premiere, or live when I go live. It doesn't matter. There's no one that gives you the re reaction, emotion, invigoration, whatever you want to call it, passion, desire, than the GOC. That's right. It's me. 
right now. Davy Boy Smith, that's right, one half of the British Bulldogs against the Warlord. Again, talk about guys and the way the rosters look and wrestlers look back then. Here we are in 1991, and even when we did WrestleManias 1, 2, and 3, just in the middle 80s into the late 80s, the early middle 90s, juice, steroids, say whatever the fuck you want, bigger, stronger, faster, because that's what you guys say in 2023, 2024. Everybody's been saying that, and every year after that, so we say, oh... Uh, the guys in the 90s were bigger, faster, stronger than the guys in the 80s. And the guys in the early 2000s were bigger, faster, stronger than the guys in the 90s. And now the guys from, you know, 2010 on into 2024 are bigger, faster, stronger than the guys in the early 2000s. I'm blowing out your ass. You could say that about every generation. It's not necessarily true, especially when you look at these guys, chemically enhanced or not. I'm just calling it like I see it. I give you the facts here, reality. I tell it like it is, and this is why you're here. Right now, the Warlord has tied up uh, the British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith. And again, unbelievable the shape of these two. What a professional wrestler supposed to look like. I love the lightweights, the flyweights, the cruiserweights, the welterweights. But I'm a light heavyweight, heavyweight guy. And if you have agility, there's room for everybody on the card. From women to midgets to everything in between. There just is. Tag teams, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, a hardcore match, a regular technical match, and traditional pro wrestling. There's room for everything in this business in 2024. There always was, even historically. Davy Boy taking over on the Warlord. Warlord's in big trouble right now. Davy Boy off the second rope. Big clothesline on the Warlord. The Warlord doesn't go down. Flying body press. Off the ropes, body press by Davy Boy. Two count on the Warlord. And again, remember in WCW, the feud between the Warlord and the Barbarian and the Road Warriors? Big boot to the face uh, by Davy Boy. Setting up the Warlord for a pile driver. He's trying to get him up. He can't get the Warlord up. Big back body drop by the Warlord on Davy Boy. But Davy Boy holds on. Is the Warlord going to go over? Is he going to get the pin? Davy Boy's got him by the leg. No, and down goes the Warlord with a double bicep. A reversal. By Davy Boy, two count, back and forth here are false finishes. Yeah, I'll get back to my point in a, in, a, in a minute. Into the corner. Davy Boy charges Warlord. Big boot by the Warlord. My mind's like a lazy Susan. It'll, it'll come back around. What we were talking about and traditionally and how wrestlers look and where there's a room for people on the show. But again, look the part, be the part. If you're going to be slender, okay. If you're going to be a little heavier, okay. If you're going to be in great shape, okay. But the makeup for it and your presentation, your charisma, your ring generalship, your emotional investment, your, your storytelling, your ring psychology, work to your strong points. It's great to have 20 or 30 or 40 moves in your repertoire, but find that half dozen and stick with them as your base. Perfect them. And then everything else is gravy after that. Listen to what I'm saying. Big full Nelson by the Warlord on Davy Boy Smith. Again, two behemoths. And you see that Davy Boy wasn't that tall. So that's my point about pro wrestling. And, and, and to yesteryear and today, in and, and my opinion, and you guys are going to learn a lot here. Class is in session. That's why you're here. And it's not just about watching the product or even doing the current day product. Because I still watch AEW. I'll still watch the WWE. I check in on MLW, the NWA occasionally, TNA, Impact, New Japan, Ring of Honor. I keep tabs on the indies. That's what you're supposed to do if you're a true fan, whether I like it or don't like it. It's still part of my passion, part of who I am. As we go through the Warlord right now, still holding on, he's got the fingers grasping the appropriate uh, a full Nelson of what he's putting on Davy Boy. But Davy Boy, look at the size of him. He's jacked. Just, just like the Warlord, but the Warlord was one of a kind. And again, back to that feud, as I was saying, the Road Warriors from the bench press contest, which wasn't the greatest concept, I get it, against the Warlord and the Barbarian. What a feud the Warriors had with these two men. Uh, we just saw the Barbarian teaming up with Meng. But Warlord and Barbarian, for their short run and for what they did, unbelievable. Warlord picks up Davy Boy. Davy Boy jumps over, picks up Warlord like he's nothing. Has him over his shoulders, the big man, Davy Boy, going for the power slam. Carrying the Warlord around the ring. Bang! Davy Boy hits the power slam on the Warlord. Here's the cover. And he doesn't kick, almost kicks out. That's it, it's over. He carried the Warlord around the ring. Bang! The power slam, and that's it, it's over. The British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith. Wow, and he's got Matilda. He's got Matilda. 
pins the warlord with his manager slick. Look at all the managers that were on this card here. We're 40 minutes in, so we're going to go to a bark part two. Uh, we've already seen certain matches. Uh, we're going to hold on. Maybe we'll go a little longer. But you had you get, we got Queen Sherry coming up. You have Jimmy Hart. You have the Slickster. You have Bobby the Brain Heenan. You have Paul Bearer. Five, six, seven old school traditional managers. This is when I made my debut. Had I had stuck with it, like Mancini said, from the early 80s, by the middle 80s, I'd have been up in New York or wherever down south. And easily, I would have been one of those old school managers because I took the fucking bumps. Remember that. Always remember that. As I froth at the mouth here. Uh, right now, it's Knobs and Sags and Jimmy Hart, the nasty boys and Mean Gene. Let, let's run down what we've seen so far. We've seen the Rockers, Janetti and Michaels, go over on Haku Ming and the Barbarian, a.k.a. Haku Ming. We saw the Texas Tornado go over on Dino Bravo. We have the Nasty Boy. We just saw, like I said, the Bulldog over the Warlord. Now we have the Nasty Boys. Who's their opponent for the night? Again, you know I've seen it a hundred times. Let's check it out, guys. Let me see. Let me see. Bear with me. The Nasty Boys I don't even have on the card for WrestleMania 7. Come on, Chaos. you got to have it here. Some oh, yes. Oh, wait. What am I talking about? What the fuck? You see? Even the best stumble. I said it earlier. The World Wrestling Federation Tag Team tires, Titles, it's the Hart Foundation defending against the Nasty Boys. And there's the Hart Foundation with the gold. Boy, do they look good, especially for the day. Talk about tag teams. I could tell you all the tag teams. The tag team divisions of 2024 couldn't carry their jock straps. Looking right now at the pink and black attack with those belts. It looks tremendous. Remember the time, 1991. We're going forward to go back. It really was something. The tag team division was incredible. There was a lot of emphasis on it. And there isn't any now. There just is, isn't in, in, in either company. This is classic. Uh, uh, classic WrestleMania. Not one of the best ones. Wasn't voted one of the best of all time, that's for sure. Or attendance-wise. I, I get it. But I wanted to pick out something different that everybody else that's doing it now. And doing these uh, uh, watch-alongs and reviews and stuff leading into WrestleMania 40. That's great. But I'm going to do it and mix it up for the ones you don't necessarily remember as well. But you should because of their historical facts that are behind that particular event. And there's Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby the Brain Heenan at ringside doing the play-by-play -play and the color along with yours truly. Again, we're 42 minutes in here. We have a bunch of matches. Are we going to stay here right now for the tag team championship between the Nasty Boys and the Hart Foundation? Should we stay here for this matchup? Jimmy Hart wearing the the motorcycle helmet, pretty good, Jimmy Hart. Still a legend going today in his 80s, or at least 80. What a manager. Hall of Famer. Mount Rushmore, maybe. Perhaps. Longevity, the best. Put him in that category with Paul Heyman. Maybe not booking-wise, but put him in there. So here we go. For the World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Championship, it's the Hart Foundation against the Nasty Boys with Jimmy Hart. We are... 44 minutes in. We're going to stay here for this. Okay? And then we'll come back with part two. And on part two, it's going to include everybody from Jake the Snake Roberts and Rick Martell and that blindfold match to the big boss man to Virgil the Million Dollar Man uh, to the Legion of Doom against Power and Glory, Roma and Hercules to the main event of Sergeant Slaughter and Hulk Hogan. And let's not forget... The ultimate warrior and the macho man snap into a Slim Jim. That's what's coming up on part two here. WrestleMania 7, 1991, March of 91 to be exact, at the Los Angeles Sports Arena. And again, as I said in the opening, you know the controversy behind the L.A. Memorial Coliseum and security concerns because of the Gulf War and, and all that in 1991. Again, salute to the troops and moving forward and what's going on in the world. I don't want to get back into that, but we're going to stay here. This is probably going to take us 
up to an hour for part one after we get there's a young Macaulay Culkin uh, home alone at ringside he's ringside alone maybe I don't know man so the nasty boys against the Hart Foundation for the championships this will be the final match of part one I'm repeating here but I want you guys to have the information in case you're just tuning in then we'll go to a part two with the the big big ones that are coming up Hogan Slaughter Macho, Warrior, the GOC, that's me. Here we go. Brett and Sags starting off. Jimmy Hart, that annoying gnat at ringside. But at least with all the managers, six or seven managers, at least they were all licensed. They were allowed to be at ringside. Not like current day where everybody in the faction, everybody's brother covers, uncle, your sister's ass is at ringside. Too much distracts, takes away bullshit booking. Lazy booking, I'm just telling you that. Do it this way. That's how you could learn a lot from the past as Sags takes over on Bret Hart right now, pounding him down to the canvas. It's okay to look in the past. I get it. The rearview mirror is smaller, but it's for a reason to look back, respect, and honor it, the ones who paved the way before you. You can't get to where you're going or where you're at unless you remember or recognize where you came from. That's why the concept of the rearview mirror and the windshield. Look at it, respect it, get to the present, and then in that big windshield, jam on that gas pedal. Full speed ahead. That's what it's all about. That's Bret Hart coming back right now, taking it on sacks. Nice arm ringer. And what the Hart Foundation does, right to the elbow, to the left shoulder, reversal off the ropes. Sags goes for the big boot. Bret Hart kept, catches him. Sags is hopping on one foot. What are you going to do, Bret Hart? Beautiful leg sweep by Bret Hart. And it looks like he's setting him up for a sharp shooter. Or as I call it, what Bret Hart calls it. No, instead of boot to the LaBonge to the pond zone of Jerry Sags. And I'll get back to my point. Don't think I forgot what I was saying. Here's the tag. Here comes in Knobs. Now it's Knobs and Bret Hart. This is for the Tag Team Championship. The Hart Foundation and the Nasty Boys. Two legendary tag teams. When tag team wrestling was fucking tag team wrestling. And here comes the anvil. Here he is. <laughs> the anvil and Knobs. Beautiful collar and elbow. Oh, Knobs getting the best of the anvil. Back in the corner. Big shoulder blocks. Right to the LeBons. To the pond zone. Reversal, anvil, setting up sags. I mean, knobs, laying them in. Those huge forearm shivers to knobs. Far side, Irish rip. Beautiful hip toss by anvil on knobs. The big man, big shoulder block by anvil. Knobs goes through the middle rope. He's outside. He's persona non grata. Anvil with a shoulder block to sags. He's out of the ring. Persona non grata. Anvil has cleaned house. Both the nasty boys are out. And in order to get respect, you have to start with respecting yourself. Once you do that, you open other people's minds to respecting you. There's three types of people in this world. Those who don't know what happened. Those who wonder what happened. And people like the guardian of chaos. And you that are here that make things happen. Knobs back in the ring. Anvil with the arm bar. Knobs backs him into the corner. Big rights to the jib of Anvil. Anvil's in big trouble. Front face lock by Knobs as Sags is tagged in. Forearm shivers by Sags on Nightheart. Knobs steps out. Now it's Sags and Nightheart. Nightheart now, after cleaning house originally, is in trouble now. Reversal off the ropes. Oh, and... Anvil grabs Sags by the hair, slams him to the canvas. Here comes the hitman. The best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. He's in the ring. Big rights on Sags. Another right. Sags is in big trouble. Rights to the midsection. Rights to the jawline. Tosses him face first into the turnbuckle. Remember that turnbuckle's got padding, but underneath it is metal. What don't you understand? Now, that's how you throw a punch. Hart laying him in on the turnbuckle to Jerry Sags. Laying him in and dropping him into the corner of the turnbuckle with right hands that look like they're going to take a building out. Far side. Big right to the LeBons, the pond zone, the midsection. Beautiful leg sweep by Bret Hart. A Canadian leg sweep. Hart to the second rope. Jumping off. Boom with that trademark elbow off the top, off the middle rope. Here comes Knobs. Here's Sags. Bret Hart laying him in right now. Laying him in on Sags and Knobs. 
It's two on one, but Bret Hart's take. Oh, and there is from behind Nobbs. Ref Hebner, get him the fuck out of the ring. Now Nobbs is out, Sags is in, but Bret Hart is hurt. And then a big clothesline by Sags. Down goes Bret Hart, rolls out of the ring. Anvil's still in the corner. Anvil going to check on Bret Hart. The referee going out there too as the nasty boys are in the ring. Big turn of events. And again, this is what you get. Matches that meant something. Simple maneuvers, power maneuvers that'll rock your socks off. This is pro wrestling. None of it was perfect. It's never perfect. This was also part of the cartoon era as well. Pushing the envelope, pushing the line. I get it. I'm a Jim Crockett NWA fan. WWF territory is where I grew up, but I loved it all. The territories. I'm a territory guy. Getting me crazy here now. Sags is in now. Take it over on Bret Hart. Iris whipped to the corner. Down goes Bret Hart. How quickly things turned around as the Nasty Boys were just getting their asses kicked. Bret Hart right now is in big trouble with Sags. This match is really going back and forth. Telling the story, getting the fans to the edge of their seat, bringing them up, and then boom, sitting them back down to only bring them up and get that finish and get that pop. That's what it's all about. Not everyone's got to get their shit in. You go with it. You roll with it. You see what works with the crowd while you're out there. You communicate. Communication is the key in this business and in the ring. Oh, a version of the camel clutch here by Jerry Sags on Bret Hart. You know what I need? A Hall's mentholiptus says, we're 51 minutes in here. I hope you're staying with me, man. I hope you guys are ready. Because I know that I am. We're going to go to a part two for WrestleMania 7. Here on Chaos Corner, live to tape on Guardian of Chaos, the YouTube channel, as Sags right now stomps away on the Hitman. Again, uh, in that version of, uh, of a reverse chin lock, a.k.a. camel clutch. All the pressure sitting back on the lower back, uh, combined with your lower back going this way, and then the force on your jaw and your neck and what it does to your spine. Fans, I can't tell you enough. You want to say it's predetermined? Don't call it fake! Sag slams down Bret Hart like he's garbage. Here's the tag. Here comes Knobs. What these guys did is they cut off the ring. Both the Hart Foundation and the Nasty Boys. This is tag team wrestling. Say what you want about their shape. Not all of them are in tremendous shape, maybe except Bret Hart. And again, Knobs taking over as Sags did from the tag here. And what is he doing? The reverse chin lock, the seated chin lock, the, the AKA Camel Clutch, Boston Crab, whatever the fuck you want to call it. He takes over what his partner did to continue to work that body part that's already injured on Bret Hart. This is what's missing in today's business. Everyone wants to get their spot, get their spot, go back and forth. I understand it. You all got to get it in. Everybody's waiting. There. That's not how it was back then. It's about communication. Another tag. Nasty Boys doing it great, as I was saying earlier. Both teams cut off the ring. They, they pick out a body part. Quick tags in and out so no one gets winded. Keep your opponent off his feet. Keep his equi equilibrium off. Keep him away from his corner. Keep the ref distracted. If you have a manager, he's doing all the above. Nice neck breaker by Sags on Bret Hart. Bret Hart has been getting beaten with a leather strap, basically. Metaphorically, I'll say. Jimmy Hart still with the, the helmet on the outside. And again, Sags sitting back on that seated reverse chin lock that we'll call the camel clutch. And I in honor of the Iron Sheik. All right, fans, we're not even an hour in yet, so stay with me. We're going to do this into two parts. And I was looking through all the other tapes here as we're talking about the World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Championship, the Hart Foundation, and the Nasty Boys. I was going to go with WrestleMania 4 today or even 5 or 6, but I see a lot of people are doing them in order like that. And I kind of did it too within a handful of days of each other, WrestleMania 1, 2, and 3, but I wanted to jump ahead. Here's the tag, and that's what you're supposed to do. So when Sags tagged Nobbs, Nobbs runs over to Anvil, who really wasn't paying attention, gives him the forearm, gets Hebner to go over and distract him because the Anvil tries to get in. What does Nobbs do? Takes over while Hebner's distracted over by the Anvil, drops a couple elbows on that lower back, and again back into that camel clutch maneuver. Smart tag team wrestling. Say what you want about the Nasty Boys. Are they a my Mount Rushmore? No. But these are the types of tag means. Bret Hart gets to his feet and then drops him on a slam 
a backward slam by Bret Hart on Knobs. He's got to make the tag now. Bring in the anvil. And there's Sags. In there to break it up. The referee's going to try to go off the Sags, but then the anvil comes in. You know how it works. The referees were at least more valuable back then. Double team. The Nasty Boys taking over. Dosi Do in the corner. Bret Hart moves out of the way. Big clothesline on Sags. Down goes Sags. Knobs hits the turnbuckle. Now is the fucking chance for the hitman to make the tag to the anvil. I apologize for the cussing. For the cussing. It's getting crazy here. It's breaking down at WrestleMania 7. The tag is with Anvil, but of course, Hebner, who's got the brain of a turnbuckle, the brain of a dehydrated BB, he didn't see it. Here comes the megaphone. Jimmy Hart gives it to Knobs. Knobs goes to hit Bret Hart. Hart ducks. Sags gets hit with the megaphone. Hart tags Anvil. Here comes the Anvil. Those big forearm shivers on Brian Knobs. Forearm shivers over onto Sags. Anvil taking on both. Big body slam. He throws knobs on top of Sags. Set him up for the football. Set him up for the football block. Here it comes. The double clothesline by the Anvil. Down goes the Nasty Boys. The megaphone. Jimmy Hart, you fucked up. Big back elbow by, by Neidhart. Takes off the head of Sags into a big clothesline. Here's the cover. Here's the pin. Only a two count. The megaphone backfired. You would have thought that would have been enough. Anvil picks up uh, Sags, like, knobs like he's nothing. Big standing power slam. Here's the count. Here's the cover. Broken up by Sags. Again, say what you want about the Nasty Boys. This is how. The, this is when you're 10, 12 tag teams deep. Nasty Boys aren't even considered the very best. One of the best, but not the very best. Bret Hart and Sags fighting outside the ring. Knobs and Anvil in the ring. Side headlock. Drop down. Step over. Wait, Knobs and Sags hit each other. Noggin and noggin. Bret Hart lays out Jimmy Hart. Beautiful. Down goes the weasel. The rat. Oh, that's Bobby Heenan. Here it is. Here's the maneuver. The finisher. Big clothesline on Sags as Anvil holds him. Here's the cover by the Anvil on, on, on Knobs. The megaphone comes into play again. Sags has it. I got a little confused there. Sags hits Anvil, who was pinning Knobs with the megaphone a second fucking time. Now Sags is on top of the Anvil. There's the three count. It's over. Your new World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Champions, courtesy of the megaphone, twice by Jimmy Hart. Hebner's, it really is, is really p perhaps the worst referee. We know that Hebner's a legendary status in the world of professional wrestling. And that's it, fans. WrestleMania 7 from Los Angeles, California. The Nasty Boys have become your new World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Champions over the Hart Foundation in their last televised match together. The historical meaning here. And that's why I picked WrestleMania 7. Not only that, The Undertaker's debut tonight. Come back here for part two. We're going to sign off for now. We're less than an hour in here on part one, WrestleMania 7. New Tag Team Champions, the Nasty Boys. I'll say that to say this. Because I tell it like it is. Don't you dare miss it and come back for part two here on Chaos Corner. WrestleMania 7 review. It's going to be Jake the Snake and the model Rick Martell in the blindfold match.